When people think of the great empires of the world since antiquity, Africa isn't a place that frequently comes to mind, excluding the Roman, Ottoman, and Egyptian empires, all of which strictly encompassed the northern edge of the continent. However, there have been many empires to have cropped up in other parts of Africa in the past two millennium, such as the Mali Empire, which wasn't really located in modern-day Mali, or the Ghana Empire, also not really located in modern-day Ghana, or the Ethiopian or Abyssinian Empire, and the Nubian Kingdom and nearly all of them have been in this region here. That is, the region of the Sahel, a transitional belt that serves as a buffer between the greatly differing Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa, along with the Horn of Africa, an area that has a very ancient and unique history. Since these are both transition zones, the genetic and ethnic history of these areas are very diverse and extremely heterogeneous. The Horn and the Sahel aren't generally grouped together, but I see many similarities between the two regions, which I'll elaborate on later in the video. Let's go ahead and begin from east to west, which brings us to the Horn of Africa. I define the Horn of Africa as all of the land that is inhabited by the speakers of the Cushitic and the Ethiopian Semitic languages, who are contained to a few dozen ethnic groups. This would include Somalia, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Eritrea, the northeast corner of Kenya, and the eastern coast of Sudan. The people of the Horn of Africa are divided between the Kushites, who speak Cushitic languages, a branch of Afro-Asiatic, and the Habesha people, who speak a branch of Afro-Asiatic more closely related to Arabic. I made the mistake in a previous video of referring to all the people of the Horn of Africa as Cushitic, and let's just say a lot of people let me know my mistake in the comments. So although they do share a very common genetic heritage, there is a distinction between the two groups. It's pretty well known that Somalia has one of the least stable governments on the planet, if you could even call it that, and there's actually a few groups that are currently duking it out in order to gain control of the entirety of its territory. There are also very large numbers of ethnic Somalis that live in the surrounding areas, such as in northeastern Kenya and a huge chunk of eastern Ethiopia known as Agaden, and the small nation of Djibouti, which is actually split between the Somalis and the Afar people at a ratio of about 2 to 1. There have been many efforts and even wars in an attempt to unify all ethnic Somali areas into a single Somali state, although it's unknown if these efforts will ever be successful. The nation of Ethiopia, which makes up the bulk of the Horn, is often mocked in the West for being one of the most underdeveloped countries in all of Africa. However, Ethiopia had one of the longest reigning empires in the entire world, being established almost 1,000 years ago with only a minor break in sovereignty following the Italian occupation during World War II. The Abyssinian Empire was quite impressive for its time, being able to fight off many invaders such as the mighty Ottoman Empire, and was even one of the first nations in the world to officially adopt Christianity as the state religion. Ethiopia is divided into many regions based on ethnic origin, and actually has collected excellent data on ethnicity, religion, and language of their citizens through census records, making it one of the few African countries besides South Africa to do so. The largest group in Ethiopia is the Oromo people, who are nearly equally divided between Christian and Muslim, and the next largest is the Amharic people, who are actually the ones that dominate the country linguistically, and when many people refer to the Ethiopian language, Amharic is usually the one that they have in mind. Eritrea and Ethiopia have a very rocky history with Ethiopia actually occupying Eritrea for a long period of time up until the 1990s. Eritrea is dominated by the Tigrinya and Tigray peoples, two ethnic groups that are very closely related but also quite distinct with the Tigrinya practicing Orthodox Christianity like the Amharic people and the Tigray overwhelmingly adhering to Islam. In neighboring Sudan, there's a group of Kushites along the coast called the Beja people, who also slightly extended to Egypt because of their nomadic nature. Because of their location, the Kushites and the Habesha have become their own separate gene pool, distinct from the Bantu peoples that populate much of the rest of Africa. They've had significant genetic input from the Middle East, South Asia, and North Africa, which has given them a rather unique appearance with phenotypical features such as slim lips and noses, generally lighter skin than Bantus, and hair that can range from extremely curly to wavy or straight. They're considered by many to be some of the most attractive African people, and by looking at many of the international models that have come from the Horn, 
I have to agree. Now, Sudan is very tricky because it's hard to find a general consensus on just what the Sudanese people actually are. In South Sudan and parts of the Republic of Sudan, the people are Nilotic, which is a group that I've talked about before and I have a lot of interest in. The Nilotes are also very distinct from the people of the Horn and Bantus and they have their own gene pool that has developed over thousands of years. They have some of the darkest skin tones of any group of people in the world, being so dark that it's almost an ashy gray color. And they are also one of the tallest people in the world, with the average male being six foot four. The rest of Sudan is made up of Afro-Arabs, meaning that they were once African groups, but over time Arabs settled in the region and either mixed with these groups or had assimilated them through a process called Arabization. For this reason, the genotype of Sudanese Arabs varies considerably, with some self-identified Arabs ranging from only 20 to 70% Middle Eastern DNA. Someone that has a genetic composition of 50% African, 50% Arab in Sudan would most likely identify as Arab since there's a certain stigma with identifying as black African in the country. One of the main reasons South Sudan decided to break off from the country in 2011. There's been systematic oppression and violence towards the African ethnic group of the Fur in Western Sudan because they have not yet been fully assimilated by the Sudanese Arabs. They're most well known for being in the region of Darfur, an area where hundreds of thousands of people have been killed in a genocide over the past decade. They're a part of the Saharan ethnic groups, which is a group I admittedly don't know a lot about, although they are related to the Nilotic peoples of South Sudan and East Africa, but they don't normally have the distinct feature of Nilotes, that being the extreme height or the jet black skin. Now we're getting into the region of the Sahel, which is a large horizontal stretch of land in the geographic region between the Sahara Desert to the north and Sub-Saharan Africa to the south. It meanders through many countries, but mostly Mauritania, Mali, Niger, and Chad. In Chad, the majority of the population is made up of the Nilo-Saharan ethnic groups mentioned earlier, although there's a large minority of Arabs at around 14 to 17 percent. The Chadian Arabs are similar to the Sudanese Arabs, since they also have a very large amount of African admixture and were established through a process of Arabization. There are also small enclaves of Arabs in the Central African Republic, Cameroon, and even in Northeast Nigeria, although there are currently no studies on their genetic makeup. In Niger, there's also a small population of Arabs in the east, but the largest Semitic group there are the Toregs. The Toregs are distantly related to the Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula, but more closely to the Berber groups of the Maghreb. Although these Semitic peoples only make up 10 to 20 percent of Niger's population, they inhabit vast stretches of land in the northern portion of the country, which are very sparsely populated. The Touaregs are able to survive because of their rugged, semi-nomadic lifestyle based on subsistence agriculture, trading good, and raising cattle. There's also a rather large Touareg population in northern Mali, which became famous in 2012 for actually fighting off the Malian army and briefly becoming an independent, albeit unrecognized, state called Azawad. Azawad would have been quite a massive country when it came to land area, being almost as large as Egypt. However, the country would have only had a paltry population of one million people because of the harsh desert environment. Azawad eventually fell in 2013 to the Malian army and were reabsorbed into the country, having suffered multiple internal conflicts along with clashes with various Islamist groups. From what I've researched over the region, there's been little interest in establishing an overarching Touareg ethnic state that would encompass all the Touareg inhabited land of northern Mali and Niger along with southern Algeria, although it would be certainly interesting to see. Next up is Mauritania, a country that straddles the line between being a West African country or a North African one. Generally, for statistical purposes, Mauritania is included with Maghrebi countries such as Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, although in reality, the people of Mauritania probably have much more in common with the previously mentioned Touaregs of the Sahel. About 30% of Mauritania's population are of West African Niger Congo origin, most notably the Fulani people, who number about 30 to 40 million people and are scattered throughout the Sahel region and the rest of West Africa. The other 70% is made up of self identified Hassaniya Arabs, although they're actually of Maghrebi Berber origins with significant admixture from Sub Saharan Africans. Something I learned after releasing my video over North Africa and the Middle East is that these two groups 
really don't like to identify or associate with each other, with North Africans actually having a rather distinct identity. Alright, that's going to go ahead and about wrap up the video. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on my analysis of the Horn of Africa and the various other countries I talked about down in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions for future videos, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.